Got another topic today, Buddha Bup Bup, overcoming anxiety and depression. This was asked by someone, they're struggling at the minute, so I'm gonna get into it. It is absolutely something that means so much to me and what I've actually come to realize over the years is a lot more people actually struggle than you think and it's good that it's becoming spoken about, it's becoming spoken about? It's spoken about more in um, mainstream media, media, you had Paddy the Baddy uh, after his win last week at UFC London um, saying about men's mental health. And this isn't just directed at men, um, it's to anyone that's really struggling with anxiety and depression. Like obviously I've been there, I wanted to take my own life, um, but now I really see my battles and overcoming them as kind of a superpower and I will get into that later in this podcast episode, but first of all, what I really want to touch on is how you get yourself out of these places where you do feel lost, you do feel so alone, you do feel like there is absolutely no end in sight. And I remember I used to wake up and after feeling a bit gutted, that I was still here because um, I used to go to bed and hope that I passed away in my sleep because then I would just, it would, I just had this thought that it'd be easier for my family. But after the thought of being gutted that I was still here, I would then wish to be the old me. Whereas the person I am today is nothing like the person that I was before anxiety and depression. And I genuinely am so grateful that that is the case because the person that got me to that point, why would I want them back? Because then it would create a pattern and I would go back into these really anxious and depressed states. And I'm not saying, I'm not saying at all that, um, I'm not saying that I don't get anxious. I don't get depressed anymore. I don't get anxious, but anxiety is something where you just worry about the future. Right, so my thing with my mental health was I just thought I was not doing good enough at the age that I was to create the life that I wanted. So it was very difficult to overcome that because I constantly felt like a failure. I constantly felt like anything that I did wasn't good enough. I wasn't gonna to amount to anything. But then I had depression as well I'd say because I was focused on my past like my childhood my upbringing I'm not saying that I've had a, a, a terrible upbringing not at all but there was things in my past that I didn't agree with that then made me fixate on them and say sort of like life so unfair and so on um, so how I got myself out of that was I needed to get to a point and I'm not saying that I'm, I'm putting this out to, to make everyone clear, you don't need to get to this point, but the only way that I got to that point was the day that I wanted to kill myself, I realized that I wanted to live. Like I knew I wanted to live, I just knew that I couldn't continue with the thoughts inside of my head. And I think everybody, whether it is with your mental health, your physical health, with your relationship, Everyone has a breaking point. And when you get to that point, it's whatever, what way you wanna go, yeah? So for example, with my mental health, my breaking point was, if I don't change this now, I am not gonna be here. And that is not what I want. Like I know that I've got so much to offer the world and I wanna be able to give that. So. I think the first thing and definitely the biggest step for anyone that is struggling, you ain't alone. And it is the most important thing is to speak to people. Like you'll think that people won't understand or people won't care or people think you're a pussy or in a man's case, you need to man up. All of that is bollocks. Like what are people gonna care more about? You being alive or your, you perceiving yourself to be a pussy, so therefore you don't want to share to people. And 
you might sometimes need to go over the same things over and over again with people and just get it out and you might feel like a burden but better to be alive and a burden than dead yeah next thing um it's all well and good sharing these thoughts and feelings with your mates your family and so on that is great yeah and i would 100 percent encourage that like when i started to tell my friends and my family how i was feeling the amount of time the amount of effort they put into me and they just listened they was just there they realized really realized that i was going through a tough time and they just took it upon themselves to to just be there even though that i was horrible to be around not because not i was trying to be a dick but where i didn't really see much joy in life i was always down it was always it there was no i couldn't give anything back because it goes to that saying you can't if you need to fill your cup first or you need to attach your um, oxygen mask when the plane's going down first because then you can't help anyone else so there was nothing in my cup it was empty and I think that being at that point it is hard for the people around you however as I say they will want you to be here but they're not professionals so if you are struggling with anxiety and depression I didn't until I went to um, my psychologist I didn't really know the root of the problem. I just knew that I was not in a good place. And I had an idea what the cause was, but it really, like going to someone that is trained, they work day in, day out with people, and it is their job. It's their job for eight, nine hours a day to sit down with people and go through their feelings. They've experienced it over and over again. So. Going to see a counsellor or a psychologist is 1,000% like money is invested. Don't get me wrong, it can be pricey. I think you can do it through NHS or um, schemes or whatever. I don't really know outside of the UK. But I think that regardless of that, you've got to think like, all right, it might be a big cost up front. But the reality is, what is the cost if you do not go? And I think too many people, when they're looking to make changes, they're put off by, oh, that's, that's really expensive. But nothing is going to be more expensive than your life. Do you know what I mean? So 1,000%, I would say, see a counsellor. You need to, when you're overcoming your battles with your mental health, you need to really understand progress in anything, not just with your mental health, in life, it is never lineal. It's not, oh, today I've decided to make a change and from there I'm gonna literally fly. Like, there's been times where I've had dips in my mental health, but there's just a part of me that's like, just keep going, keep going, keep going. And something that I've sort of calloused my mind with is like, the only way that it gets worse is if I stop. And I think that is something that everyone can take on board. Like you are not gonna feel, you're gonna, you might implement all these habits that make you feel good or are meant to make you feel good, are meant to improve your mental health. But the reality is when you start carrying out these habits, you, are, you will still feel shit. You will still feel shit, but a little less shit than you did the day before. And if you put enough of those days in front of each other, I promise you, like, I wanted to end my life in the August, and by December, after going to counseling, I could feel, so I started counseling every single week, every single week from the day that I wanted to kill myself. And then I went to, I think by November, end of November, December, I was going bi-weekly because I'd made that much progress. Because one thing that you need to understand as well is like, if you have an intention to do something, yeah, you're going to do it. You're gonna put everything into making that change. So my intention was, I want to just 
cure myself effectively or find out ways how I can think differently. So within what, September, October, let's say three months, I was already down to like bi-weekly sessions. In my sessions, I found out that I felt really trapped and um, that my counsellor basically said to me, it come out in conversation about me going to Australia. She was like, what have you got to lose? Right pros and cons, what have you got to lose? I'd created all this fear in my mind that I was too old to do it or whatever, but it wasn't something that was even, I even had it my, in my consciousness. It was like more of a subconscious thought which she brought out of me. And that again has been one of the best decisions of my life. So. I can't tell you enough, like seeing a trained profession, professional, I had CBT, which is Cognitive Behavioural Therapy. Um, seeing a trained professional to help you deal with your thoughts. Some of the things that she would say to me is like, your thoughts are like, imagine traffic, and if you hold on to a fault, that's gonna stop and then there's gonna be a traffic jam, yeah? So a car, imagine a car is a fault in your brain, that stops, it's gonna leave a pile up of faults and the more faults that are in your head, it's so much more difficult to deal with. But she cope, like, I'm not saying it's gonna be a she for you, but a counselor will coach you through those faults and let you understand that it's okay to let them go. And when you do, the faults just pass through. You might still have the faults, don't get me wrong, but they, they're not holding up, they're not taking time in your brain where you're building this story up in your head that is taking them completely out of context and then you start to believe that they're true. Um, another, the second thing that I would, so that's counselling, that's definitely, so talking, that's definitely number one, counselling, that falls under that. Next thing I'd recommend to anyone is Whatever anyone says to you will improve your mental health. And there's obviously some facts about it. Like, don't, when I was really struggling, I'd turn to like quick fixes to help my mental health, like booze, drugs. And they are, um, in the short term, they made me feel good. And by short term, I mean over the 12 hours that I was getting pissed or taking drugs. But then, long term that was only detrimental to my mental health so don't do any of that shit but things like self-development like understand your mind like something that i thrive off of or froth of i should say is self-development books telling me how my mind works like um i could list them list the books that i've read out i usually do like one book a month and it is just i'm so interested just to find out how my mind works and it comes down to as well the information that you absorb and that goes into, actually I'll save that little segment for a little bit I think. Um, it'll be also like meditation. When I first started meditating I was like what the fuck is going on here? And even still sometimes I can't concentrate on my meditation. I can't take myself to this place where I'm just sort of just connected with my mind and understanding it. So again, it's, it's a practice where not every time is gonna feel fucking amazing, but I do it every day because I know that if I don't, I'm gonna feel worse. Journaling, like I've literally just journaled there. I don't know if you can see that. Every day I'll write facts about myself, like actual facts, not opinions, but facts about myself. And it shows you the person that you are. Like, you'll create this idea of yourself from other people's perceptions or things that people say in a passing moment and you'll hold on to them but you know who you are and I think journaling is a great practice for that things that a gratitude list oh my days that changed my life like all of these things what I would say is like just try it it might sound so stupid if you said to Nathan at 25 what I do now and how I live my life in terms of the amount of proactiveness I show to my mental health and the things that I do, like meditating, for example. Like, Nathan at 25 would have said, that geezer is a goon, but I'd rather be a goon alive and in a happy place than struggling. So make sure you take that on board. Um, I think another thing that is just crucial with 
your mental health. And this is the third thing, as I say, it's the information that you consume. I touched on it a moment ago, but I read uh, self-development books all the time. I listen to podcasts that are about your mind and they're positive. They're literally, I try and fill my day up with so many positives, not fucking doom and gloom of the news or people fucking moaning or even my circle. Like, if you are bitching, if you are gossiping, if you are chatting shit, if you are somebody that is a negative person or maybe just someone that is not beneficial to my life for it, that's the, probably the best way to put it. You're getting cut. You're getting cut because that's only going to drag you down. Yeah, that's like... You are the average of the five people you spend the most amount of time with. And you may not think it, but even with words, like you spend time around people and your words become the same. Like you'll, you'll know that already where your mates will find one phrase funny or something, but to someone else that is not funny at all. So you're so influenced by the information you take in. Make sure that information is gonna benefit you it is like I'm not saying do it all day every day but yeah that's that's something that I've really focused on is like the information that I consume needs to be something that's gonna de help develop a positive mindset because if you are surrounded by negativity or people that make you feel anxious or people that make you feel depressed insecure worried they're only going to bring you down. So why would you want that in your life? And ultimately, if they're not, if they're not bringing, if people don't bring you up, cut them out. Whether that's for life or for a little bit, just whilst you're recovering and becoming and growing, I should say, into the person that you want to be, then that is definitely like a huge, huge thing which I've realised even more so since I've been back from Australia. Um, and I think that the final thing that I want to touch on is probably the control that you have on your life. And it is important to know the things that you can control and also the things that you can't control. And the things that you can't control, there's no point in wasting your time and worrying about them because you can't fucking do anything about it. It's as simple as that. Whereas the things that are in your control, for example, when you wake up, setting your intention to develop your mental health so that it does become better, so you are no longer anxious or depressed, yeah? That the habits that you form, the people that you talk to about where, you're, where you are, these things will rap rapidly change the way you think and believe and like, Something for me is like, it is like, it is just m mental how, like I am just such a normal bloke, it's a joke, like I'm literally just so normal. And that's how I know if I can do it, like anyone can overcome this problem that there is. And it is all about just making sure that one, people know that you're there to speak to, but two, you have to hold on to just knowing, knowing you can do it. And that is the biggest thing for me. And I'm so proud of myself because of it. Like I knew when I was in that state, I didn't want to take my life. I didn't, I knew that. And I held on to that and I was like, I will do anything in my power to get away from this. And I would say, by the time I went to Australia, I was still shitting it. So I wanted to commit suicide in the August, flew to Australia in the February. I was still shitting it, worried about my mental health. And then I would say for 18 months after, I'd still worry that I'd be susceptible to battles with my mental health. And as I say, that doesn't mean at times, like I'm not this fucking robot now. There are times where I feel extremely anxious. But then I go into my toolbox of things that I've created whilst battling my mental health. I pull out what I need to. And it's like, okay, I'm feeling really anxious at the moment. Let me double up and double down on what I want to 
like what I want to implement to make sure that my happiness and my determination to be happy is brought to another level. And I think that that is so important, like implementing and being proactive. Because as I say, 18 months after, I was still worried that I was gonna fall back into those tendencies. Um, another really important thing to remember is you are a human, yeah? You have emotion. There are things that are gonna really, really upset you. There are things that are gonna really piss you off. But again, there's that saying in there, like life is 10% what happens to you, 90% how you react to it. And I believe that beyond belief, like you are in control. And as I say, if something upsets you, whether that's a mate, in a relationship, at work, you have the ability to do what you need to do to control that situation with your emotion, yeah? And whether that means ending a relationship, cutting friendships, quitting a job, nothing is more important than your mental health. So if something's dragging you down, fuck it off and change it. And I, I, I'm gonna end this episode in just saying like, the best thing that's ever happened to me in my life is wanting to take my own life. And the reason for that is because there's nothing scarier. There's nothing scarier than the battle you fight that no one else can see. It's you versus you. And when you pull yourself out of that place, you honestly, it's, it's like a superpower because now I don't fear, I've done so many things since that day where I wanted to kill myself and it, they're things that I would have been too scared to do before that point. But now I literally think like, if I can overcome that, I can do anything. Like what can't I do? What is gonna be more difficult in my life than overcoming the battle with myself? Absolutely nothing. So you owe it to yourself to just go balls to the wall, go all in and just implement everything. Money don't matter, your life does, yeah? So if you're worried, oh shit, I'm gonna be spending 120 quid a week on a counselor, fucking spend the money. Because you'll look back, if someone said to me, when I was doing counseling, if they was like, this is gonna cost you 10,000 pound overall, but in, what? two years time effectively, you're gonna feel happier than you ever have, you will have grown as a person, you will know how to deal with anxiety and depression going forward. Do you think that's a good exchange? 100% best investment I've ever made in my life. So yeah, it might be long, but trust me, you've just got to commit to change and you will do it. Um, I'll leave that one there, it was very deep. Um, as always, whatever platform you're on, please like, subscribe, rate it. Um, I want this podcast to blow up because I do think that there is too many people out there that are suffering in silence still. And I think that one of the reasons that I've got through my battles is because I was meant to share this message. So yeah, much love, have a fantastic week and I will see you in the next episode.